Hey guys, Pastor Chelsea here, and you're watching The Thursday Show. I'm so glad you're with me today. Well, last week, if you joined me, you will recall that I asked you to do a little favor for me. Well, this week I'm asking if you could do the same favor again. If you could help me out by filling out just a short survey, it gives me lots of feedback on why you like the Thursday show, if you like the Thursday show, and how I can make it better in the future. So if you can just go to this link that the QR code takes you to, you can scan this with the camera on your phone, or you can follow the link in the description. It's 10 questions, it's totally anonymous, and already the feedback that I've been getting has been so helpful. So if you have already filled it out, you don't have to do it again. Thank you so much for those of you who have been filling out that survey, and thank you for those of you who are going to fill it out in the future. I'm gonna show that same link again at the end of this episode, so you don't have to do it right now. But what's been so great is how some of the feedback that I've received has already lined up with some of the episodes that I'm excited to plan for you all in the future, such as today's episode. I was thinking, you know, with summer right around the corner, a lot of times summer would be the time when I would actually be able to read or to catch up on some movies. And so I wanted to provide some resources for you. If you're trying to figure out what that book is you're going to read or books that you want to read this summer, I'm going to give you a couple, a couple favorites that I've had over the years. Now, these are not all of my favorites, but these are the, some of the ones that I wanted to share with you today. And side note, it's so cool that this is happening because one of the pieces of feedback I had just gotten in one of the surveys was that you wanted to hear some top five, top 10 lists of books or movies or translations or other things. So it's kind of cool that those things are coincided. So without further ado, I want to take you through five books that I've read and that I would definitely recommend. I'm gonna just do a super short explanation on each one to give you a feel for what the book is about and help you decide if you want to add this to your summer reading list. All right, let's dive in. All right, so as I'm looking through these books, I'm probably going to just give them in a very random order and you will also notice they are color coordinated. That was not by accident. All right, let's start right here. The Emotionally Healthy Leader. This is a book that we read together as a staff a couple years ago now. It is written by Peter Scazzaro. And what I loved about this book is that it gave some very practical suggestions for being emotionally healthy as a leader. You know, there's lots of books that are out there about leadership and about qualities that you should possess. Well, I felt like this book was really good at actually doing some soul care and checking in on you and how you're at internally so that then you can give your best externally. So if you're in any kind of position of leadership and you're looking for something that can help rejuvenate your soul, encourage you, refresh you, give you some nuggets of wisdom, I would definitely recommend this book. Don't be intimidated that it's the thickest one out of, out of the stack that I have today because I felt like this was a really easy one to read and also one that you could read in nuggets and come back to later on. To give you just a snippet of some of the good stuff that's in this book, I'm just going to read to you a um, couple quick quotes from this page. The first quote is this, minimally transformed leaders will always result in minimally transformed teams doing minimally transforming ministry. And so if we are only transformed in a small way ourselves, how in the world can we ever expect to lead other people into great transformation? And here's another quote on that same page. It says, we must start with ourselves. Why? Because the most important way we communicate the inseparable link between work performance and personal spiritual formation is to model it. When we make our transformation in Christ the first priority of our leadership, we instill that value into our culture and in our teams. And so if you are in any position of leadership anywhere, in the workplace, in ministry, as a volunteer, as a paid staff member, making sure that you are emotionally healthy as you lead is so crucial because you're only going to be able to lead to the edge of your own capacity. So if we want to lead people into great places and great things, we must first ourselves be growing in great ways. All right, that's the first book I have for you. Set that one aside. Next up, 
The Road Back to You by Ian Morgan Cron and Suzanne Stabile. I thought it was stable, but now that I'm looking at it, it's stable. Shows how well I pay attention to my authors. All right, this book is good. It dives into a topic that maybe some of you have heard about. Uh, it's a personality profile called the Enneagram. As a church staff, a few years ago, we actually went through an Enneagram training. And ironically, just this week, we're going through another Enneagram training as well. So now is actually a great time to ask any of our staff members about the Enneagram because they can tell you all about it. But it's essentially a personality profile that shows you your strengths, your weaknesses, your motivations. And there are nine different types of personalities within the Enneagram. But within that, there's so many variations and combinations of what can exist. So it doesn't really put you in a box. But what I like about the Enneagram and about this book is that it really gives you a starting place. It gives you a starting place of starting to understand yourself better and understand the people that you live and work with better so that then your relationships can be healthier. This was actually a book that I was reading through in my first year of marriage because I was discovering that there were some, some breakdowns in communication, it seemed, between Adam and I. We would face a situation and we would both be looking at it from such different perspectives and I was trying to understand where the breakdown was happening. So for example, with Adam's Enneagram number, I learned that for him, a key motivation is about knowing who is right and who is wrong. And he would regularly want to not be the one who's wrong, which don't we all. And then I was learning that with my personality number, something that I struggle with is failure or somebody pointing out your flaws or being wrong. So this book was so helpful because it suddenly helped me identify where some of our simple problems in communication really started with our personalities and motivation. Once I recognized that, it made it a lot easier for us to communicate and get over those bumps that we were facing when we saw that those were just part of our natural tendencies. So if personality tests and profiling is your thing and you haven't done the Enneagram, you should totally check it out. There's some free tests available online or this book is a great starting point as well. Next up. This book you guys already heard me talk about if you've been watching the Thursday show. Get Out of Your Head by Jenny Allen. We actually did a book study going through this book back in the fall. And so if you are curious and knowing a little bit more about it without reading the book, that's a great place to start. But this book um, probably has been one of the most transformational ones for me personally that I've read over the past two years or so, just because I didn't realize how often my thought life was controlling me and dictating me. And I really believe that when it comes to our thinking and our patterns of thinking, it has to be a daily choice and a daily battle that we're fighting against. And so I love this book, so practical, filled with scripture and just really um, practical ways to be able to take our thoughts captive and make them obedient to Christ. Next up, this one's kind of an oldie, but a goodie. It's written by Donald Miller. It's called A Million Miles in a Thousand Years. And the key concept of this book is looking at our life through the lens of story. If you're a movie buff, if you like reading books, you're probably a fan of story as well. Well, Donald Miller, as he was working on writing, started to notice some of the natural connections between a story and the story of our lives. And so what I really liked about reading this book was how it connected me to my testimony, my personal story of what God has done in my life in a new way. It helped me look at the big story of God and his love and his pursuit for us and where my story fits into his grand story. So if you're interested in story, this is a great read. He's a great author. Last but not least, this is a favorite of mine. Um, I actually remember a friend gave me this book for my birthday one year. And when I looked at it, oh, sorry, I should give you the title. It's called One Way Love by Tulian Tavijim. He's actually the grandson of Billy Graham. So that's a little claim to fame he has. But when my friend first gave me this book, I was like, oh, okay, um, 
a, a book about grace that's cool I figured I would just set it on my shelf and never read it to be honest but then I happened to be on one of our mission trips to Mexico and I brought this along and it was a really random year where we surprisingly had more downtime than we expected and so I started reading this book well reading through it helped me recognize how while I had heard the word grace and could give you a definition of grace I personally hadn't really caught the heart of God's grace for us. And so I love this book because for me, it was a spiritual transforming season in my life where I recognized how often I can be hypocritical, judgmental, honestly like the Pharisees, and how desperately I'm in need of God's grace every single day. And that's true for all of us. This is a book that I would often give away to students in student min when I was serving in student ministry just because it had done such a refreshing work in my soul. And I actually noticed today that I have an extra copy on my bookshelf. So if you leave a comment on today's episode of The Thursday Show and tell me what you're currently reading or tell me if any of these books catches your interest I will enter in all of the comments into a drawing to receive a free copy of One Way Love by Tuli Intervision, my personal favorite out of this whole stack. So there you have it. A few book recommendations for you this summer as you are trying to figure out a book to read and trying to figure out how you can keep growing throughout the summer months. Well, this is my stack of books, all given the Pastor Chelsea Zalewski stamp of approval. So let me know if you end up reading any of these or if you like them or if you dislike them or let me know what you're reading because I'm always looking for new books that I can read, that I can grow from. And I heard a good quote once when it comes to reading, and it said, not all readers are leaders, but all leaders should be avid readers. And that shows that when we read, we're putting our brains into a space of growth and of trying to develop ourselves further. And I know for me, I don't have as much to give unless I'm finding someone else who can pour into me. And so reading is such a perfect way to do that. So I hope you take me up on it. I hope you check out one of these books or none of these books, but find something to be reading this summer. So just a reminder, now that we're at the end of today's episode, if you could fill out that survey for me, give me some feedback on the Thursday show, what you like about it, what I could change or improve for the future. That would be so valuable to me. And thank you again to those who have. So you can scan this QR code link right here to get a direct, it'll directly take you over to the survey or you can follow the link in the description. I'll put all of these titles and authors in the description as well in case you want to make sure you get, you know, spelling of the name right or find it on Amazon. But I hope that this has been helpful for you as we're entering into this awesome season of summer. I hope you have a great Thursday and I look forward to seeing you next week.